Now, friends, resource semaphore. Let's let's first run the demo. Let's first look at things. Then uh, we'll discuss why this is why does this pop up and what's the problem with resource semaphore. Right now, if you look into waiting tasks and let's just select this, you will see there's no task waiting on resource semaphore. Of course, we are not doing anything right now. There is another DMV here called SysDM exec query memory grants. If I select this right now, run this, you will see there is no request right now. This is also a real time DMV and there is no workload, no query that is asking for extra memory grant. So here comes a question. What do you mean by extra memory grant? Now, SQL Server has a limited amount of memory. I use the word limited because whatever memory you give to SQL Server, for SQL Server, it is always limited because SQL Server always wants more of it, more and more and more of memory. As much as you give it, it will continue to ask for more. The way SQL Server product is designed and it's a database product and rightly so, it would like to keep everything in memory. Like, and that's why those things like in memory OLTP databases and you know those technologies and features were introduced. But then we are limited by the amount of physical RAM we have on the box. And that RAM, that memory is used for so many things in SQL Server. It is used for caching data pages. It is used for caching index pages, for the plan cache, for the threads, uh, you know, for locks, lock memory, so many different components and, and features inside SQL Server will use that shared memory. What about your query? Your query, when it runs, the execution of the query also requires memory. There is a minimum amount of memory each query will need, like simple select statements, joins, etc. But sometimes your query might need extra memory when it does expensive in-memory operation, like sorting, like hashing, something about that we talked about probably in the first or the second session. When your query needs this extra memory, it is termed as extra memory grant. It is termed as extra memory grant. When it has to do this expensive in-memory operations and sorting and hashing is again, one of the classic examples that I can give you. So what happens is, the optimizer, when you send your select query, let's say you have written a select query with a lot of joins and finally you are doing an order by, just as an example, order by on a large result set and that query goes to the optimizer. Optimizer will try to evaluate how much memory will this query need? How much extra memory, how much extra memory grant will your query require to do this in-memory sort operation. And then just before the execution of the query, just before the execution of the query, the optimizer, the execution engine will try to reserve that much memory because from the estimates, it knows that I will need this much memory. So let's go and reserve it upfront. So we don't land up in a spilling problem or memory being short. So let's go and reserve it upfront. But the question here really is, you have a lot of expensive workloads coming in with a lot of expensive in-memory sorts. So, so will all the executions of those queries get all the memory that they want? You need memory for a lot of other things in SQL Server. Are the sort operators or the hash operators in your expensive query the only thing that needs so much of memory? Sometimes that memory requirement may go into gigabytes and I'm going to show that to you. So of course, SQL Server at some point is going to back off. Why? Internally SQL in SQL Server, these things are hard coded. How much percentage of the total memory goes to buffer pool? How much percentage of the total memory goes to plan cache? How much total percentage, how much percentage of the total memory will go to query execution for extra memory grant? Are you there with me, friends? Are you getting the idea? That percentage is hard coded. You can't change that. So when a lot of these expensive queries come in that are not expensive from the perspective of execution from CPU perspective, not from CPU time, expensive in terms of memory consumption. And then when SQL Server is giving out memory to them for their sort operation, for their hash operation, and it's giving it out from its quota, its quota of memory grant for query execution, a point comes when it hits the ceiling it will hit the ceiling. Now there is no more memory. All of you are asking for 
query, memory for query execution. All of you have expensive sort. I don't have more memory to give. Then SQL Server, those queries, those workloads are going to wait on a wait type called resource semaphore. And when they wait on resource semaphore wait type, they will also show up in this DMV called sysdm exec query memory grants. Whenever they are asking for extra memory, it will show up in memory grants. Make sense? Okay, so with this explanation, let's do this practically and see when it shows up, when it doesn't show up, et cetera, et cetera. Then everything that I explained and what we talked about will be enforced. And of course, then I'll open this up for questions, but let's first watch the demo. So we have two things here, the waiting tasks. I'm not doing the wait stats again because wait stats is just going to show you aggregated numbers, right? All of you are very well versed with that. Let's focus on what we see in these two. Right now in these two, you're seeing nothing because there's nothing running. This is my client workload. This is going to run in a loop. Now, I'll run one execution of this right now in a while loop, okay? Uh, so let's go and change the context to AdventureWorks 2014. Okay, let's do that. And let's do this now. Just one execution, one user. We do this, go back here, let's go and execute this. Okay, let's go and stop. What do you see? First thing that you will observe that when one user was running this workload, right? And why this workload is expensive in terms of its memory consumption, we'll come to that in a moment. But you can already see that there is an order by clause here. So probably it was asking for extra memory. We'll come to that. If you go back and look at the analysis here, first conclusion is this query that you ran did not wait on resource semaphore wait type, right? It did not because it didn't show up in the waiting tasks. But this query asked for extra memory. Why? You can see this query here from session ID 83. Remember this was session ID 83 where we ran the query and it showed up in extra memory grant here. So let's go and look at some numbers. So this was session ID 83, request time, grant time, requested memory. How much memory did it ask for? If you look at the number, you might be a bit surprised. It was asking for about 900 MB, about 800 to 900 MB. This is in KB, which means that in memory sort that we were trying to do in that query actually needed close to a GB for its work. It requested that much. It was granted that much. Look at this requested memory KB granted. Okay. Granted memory. And then you have the query cost also 296, right? 296. We were talking about 5, 10, 40, 50. Suddenly you see a query like cost 296, maybe because of the memory requirement, etc. You have the plan handle. So using this, you can even extract this query from the cache plan, right? So you have the plan handle and you have the SQL handle. Using this, you can extract the SQL text. So this is a beautiful DMV that gives you all the information that you need. Okay. Now, my question to you is this execution asked for closer to a GB. Friends, what if I run 10 instances of this query? What do you think? If I run 10 instances of this query, what do you think will happen? Uh, memory should diminish. Should diminish. I mean, yeah, if it's if you're requesting for eight and the resources are being bogged down, that means the memory allocation will be less than or slowly counting down. I mean, I probably that's a bad way of explaining it, but. Okay, no, no, uh, you know, Robert, good answer there. You So probably, and, and and that's not wrong. I think what you're trying to say, if one query is asking for closer than a GB, close to a GB, and if 10, 10 instances of this query comes in, maybe SQL Server will decide to bring this requirement down. Maybe it will give just 500 MB or 400 MB. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes, yes. Good point, good point. But unfortunately, SQL Server will not do that. Oh, <laughs> unfortunately, SQL Server is not going to do that. And but Robert, I'll tell you, Bravo, very good answer, because I never thought in those terms. 
SQL Server would have been super intelligent if it, it could do that. But you know why it doesn't do that? Because each query execution, when we run 10 instances, the way we have been doing, right? If we stress SQL Server with 10 command prompts, each running this query, each query is running in isolation. They have no knowledge of other one. And the optimizer also have no idea that 10 instances are going to come in. It treats each one of them individually. And when it treats each one of them individually, it is ought to give this much memory to each one of them. Even if it can only serve five requests, it's going to serve these five requests properly. So going back to my question, if you run 10 instances, okay, so we, we are talking about memory pressure. Of course, they uh, will come to the memory pressure thing also uh, in a moment. But when you run multiple instances of this, first thing is for sure that SQL Server does, just does not have enough memory to serve all the requests. It's going to serve as much as it can based on its quota of memory for this grant, for this extra grant. It will serve as much as it can. The remaining ones are going to wait on resource semaphore. Then you will start seeing those ones up here then you will start seeing those ones up here. Make sense, friends? And how long? How long will you start seeing up there? How long are they going to be in the waiting task there, waiting on resource semaphore until, until the executions are complete? The ones that have hogged up a GB or so, once their execution is complete and they go off, the memory is free for the other threads to consume. And then when their wait is over, when they get access to the memory, their wait is over. And then they use that memory and execute themselves. That's how this was going to work. Cry talked about memory pressure, which is good. So I have something here, a memory helper query. Thankfully, I have this. Ideally, I should have used this when we are doing memory module, but why not do something right now? I want to first find out how much memory SQL Server is currently using, physical memory in use. All this information about lock allocations, page allocations, reservations is in this DMB called DIM OS process memory. If I run this right now, I can see SQL Server is consuming about 2 GB of physical memory. Let's do something. Let's restart SQL Server just to clear off the memory. This is going to be a wonderful demo because this is a common thing that we see in highly configured production bosses, specifically where databases are huge, databases that are in hundreds of GBs and terabytes. This is a common phenomena because when queries come in with these large sort operations, this happens all the time. So SQL Server has restarted. Let's go and check out memory. Now look at SQL Server's memory requirement after the restart. Very, very small, right? Just about half a GB, 500 MB, okay? now. Let's go and run this in the loop, right? Client workload, okay? Let's go and execute this. Sorry, what happened? Disconnected. Okay, this is running. Let's go and check now. 479 MB straight away went to 960, 985. So we are touching about a GB. Now let's go and stop this, okay? Now let's go and we were in demo one. Let's add more clients. So we'll go to the execute client, change this fellow, save this. How many clients are we adding? We are boom. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, so many of them really, do we need so many of them? I'm just going to eat up a lot of memory friends. Why not just give, okay. Six users, save it. Okay. Let's do add client, six of them doing this job. Let's go to memory helper and execute. Do you see memory consumption going up? Have you observed that? Okay, look at this. Suddenly it's shooting up to three GB. We have touched about three GB. Those workloads are running. Now let's go back to resource semaphore here. Check this. Is there anyone waiting on resource semaphore? Syntax keyword from, okay. Okay, there you go. Now let's go and terminate the workload. 
I can just right click and close all the windows. Okay, friends, first things first, memory pressure here now. Okay, let's go and execute this from 500 MB. When we ran about six instances of that workload, it touched about three GB. SQL Server had memory to give, so it, it went up to that much. If you go and look into our diagnostic query here, now what you will observe is, what you will observe? Okay, tell me, what do you observe? Anyone? By looking at this output, by looking at this output, can anyone tell me what was going on? Well, it looks like one didn't get any grant time or uh, memory granted. Absolutely. So how many instances, friends, did we run? One, two, three, four, five, and six, right? We ran six of them. Five of them got the memory that they wanted. Look at this. These ones got the memory, but one of them did not get. And that's why you have null here. All of them asked for exactly the same amount of memory because they were the same workload and optimizer, the execution engine gave them what they wanted, but then it's quota was full. I just remembered six offhand and that's why I changed it to six. So five of them got, so maybe the total physical memory that SQL Server has and whatever that internal percentage and quota is, was good enough, was good enough for five executions. One of them had to wait in the queue. There is a queue, friends. One of them had to wait in the queue. This is the real thing about waiting and queuing. This was the one that was waiting in the queue. If I go further into this here on the right side, uh, look at QID. There is this QID called seven. I'll talk about this QID in a moment. And is it the next candidate? Yes, it's the next candidate. Its wait order is zero. If they were more waiting in the queue, the wait order will be like zero, one, two, three. That's how the numbers will be because they're all wanting memory. And it's always the queue in SQL Server is always first in, first out. So if there were more use, uh, queries waiting for the memory grant, they will be granted memory based in the order they came into the queue. So this was the one that was waiting. It was session ID 82. And here is the session ID 82 that you can see. You are wondering, right, why so many records for 82 and why is the execution context ID all zero? Yeah. And look yeah, at right. their blocking, and look at their blocking session ID. Interesting, right? 81, 77, 79, 78, 80. What's going on, friends? Can you decipher? Can you decipher this? <laughs> 